So I got a heat pump a few years ago. There's some debate online about how much more efficient they are than natural gas, but there, there's a lot of variations on how that will actually play out. Now, I've got this um, Bosch unit here that uh, I'll go show you the um, air exchanger inside, and then I'll show you an Excel spreadsheet I made about the efficiency. So this is my air exchanger over here. It's got uh, uh, the coils inside it, and then I got uh, a Goodman furnace down here. Now, they recommend that you, um, I have a downflow furnace here, and they recommend that you put the air exchanger on the outside, on the outgoing air on there, and you really need to do that. You'll have condensation issues and water and it's it's not good they they should have put it the other way now here's my handy dandy excel spreadsheet basically it's uh, to the point where you can put the kilowatt hours of either your straight time if that's what you're on or you can put on peak here and off peak here now a couple years ago i was paying about this much for gas but now after you know some lower rates there it's actually down to about that. Now I have a 97% efficiency furnace and that um, is pretty darn high for that. Now there's, there's 80s, 85s out there and you know as it gets older it probably loses a little bit too and I'm not including the blower motor either but you know that works kind of for both of them where you know the heat from the fan is actually going to add to the house. Now I was able to get the information about the uh, the efficiency ratings for my thermostat for my heat pump and um, the daily BTUs that my house needs. I was able to get that off of like the gas meter, but you know, over previous years to see how much I needed based on the outside temperature. Now some of these numbers are a little weird, but that's because that's what's in the spec sheet for the heat pump. Now, when it's over about 55 degrees, I, I really don't even need to use it, so I didn't even do numbers for that. And even for 55, it's just going to take a modest amount just to, you know, pump it up just a couple of degrees. But, you know, when it gets down to like negative 5, you're going to need a lot of energy. Now, what it means by the effect of electrical BTUs is I just took this multiply by 0.97. So this is how many BTUs I would need to be equivalent to the furnace. So one unit of the heat pump at 4.43 times of what you can get for one BTU gives you this many. So you'll need to use um, a little over, you know, about not, not even two and a half times to get that the same amount of BTUs out of a kilowatt hour. So you're going to need to use this many kilowatt hours to get this many as be the same as one therm, one the same amount of energy used in the heat pump. So as it gets colder, the kilowatt hours increase and they increase by a lot. Now the heat pump, the, the furnace. You know, you do, you know, you could see as it gets colder, you know, it's like you need, when it's negative five, you're going to need 700,000 to keep my house warm. But at 30 degrees, you're going to need a little over a third of that. So you need about almost three times as much to keep it warm at negative five than it is at 30. Now, down here, my current rates, it costs me 34 cents to run the furnace to keep it warm during it for a day. Now, on peak, it would cost 36 cents an electric, and off peak, it would cost 19 cents an electric. And if you kind of do a half on, half off, I just took the mid number from that. So, you know, when it's 30 degrees outside here, it's going to cost $1.79 to run the furnace, $3 on on peak with the heat pump, and $1.60 off peak. So it's still cheaper at that point. But over at, um, at 20 degrees, it's more expensive to run the heat pump than it is the furnace. So somewhere your break-off is 22 degrees. And if you have a good enough thermostat, you might be able to just have it monitor the outside temperature and your on and off peak and then just switch over to the furnace when it gets below 20 degrees. But, you know, between 22 degrees. But 
you know, that really depends on what you're paying for electric or the gas rates. So, you know, like a couple years ago when I was paying a buck twenty-five, you can see how the numbers start to change. Now the furnace was you know at 17 degrees, it was costing 458 a day to heat, but only 259 on the heat pump. But uh, when it gets down to zero. You can see that the, the changeover is somewhere between zero and negative five where the heat pump actually costs more. But if you're paying on peak rates for electric, well, that number changes a lot differently here, somewhere between, you know, about 16 degrees is where you're going to see the change about which is going to be more expensive for the heat pump. So, you know, even, you know, even like, you know, maybe you're paying about 88 cents a therm on your gas, and that means that, I'm probably going to be running the heat pump when it's um, over about 20 degrees. But um, the other thing, too, is it's hard to bring up the temperature when you're just on the heat pump. You can let the thing run for hours, and it's just not really even going to get warmer. And I've even found that below about 20 degrees, it, it, it's going to get slightly colder over the course of the day, even if it's running continuously. So... Either my house isn't could use some better insulation, most likely, or the heat pump is just a little undersized for my house. What I found about the heat pump, too, is when it's a warmer, you know, 30 degrees and above, it'll pull about 2 kilowatts. But when it's down to 20, 25 and below, it'll pull 3 kilowatts. So I, I actually have it running off of what used to be a... 30 amp, uh, I think, I believe it was a 30 amp dryer uh, circuit. So I got a gas dryer and I just uh, used the old circuit to run the heat pump. Now, the main reason for the heat pump was to get air conditioning in the house, which, you know, even in northern Wisconsin, it's getting to the point where you do need it during the day. And it does, it does wonders for dehumidifying the house, too, because the basement got to the point where things were just getting damp and icky down there so now you know it gets too humid you can run the air conditioner and it works great now the heat pump since i already had a gas furnace in here the install wasn't terrible and it was a little over five grand for the whole to for the whole install including the heat pump and i did get a thousand dollar tax credit from the state which just showed up as a thousand dollar check which was great and my wife and i chipped in on the purchase of the heat pump and we got air conditioning and she's happy and I'm happy so I, I might be I might decide to go and uh, put out this uh, spreadsheet you know it's got all the calculations for this where you just change the numbers and things add up but you're gonna have to add a lot of your own information to you know to figure out how much energy your house does need to keep warm and um, you know how much it's gonna you know how much you're gonna have to run it and this is just an air source heat pump that's, it does say cold climate, but it's not the greatest below about 20 degrees. And I'll just pretty much switch over to the furnace. But for the seasons of, um, you know, late September through end of November and late February through the rest of the heating season at, you know, through April, it works great. And it's so quieter than the, than the furnace and it, um, keeps me warm and it doesn't have a lot of temperature swings because it's not kicking on and kicking off. It just kind of runs and throws out even heat. So hopefully this was helpful and maybe it'll help you make a decision if you want to get a heat pump for yourself in the future. Thanks for watching.